When I was in graduate school, they told us that the pH of the ocean's waters was unchangeable, that it never varied. But what we're finding is that when you pump in huge amounts of CO2 into the atmosphere, that the pH of the oceans is starting to decline. And that decline is affecting marine organisms in many ways that, that we really are only starting to begin to understand. We have already seen, just since mankind has been uh, burning fossil fuels, we've seen a uh, a 30% increase in the hydrogen ion. Well, what does that mean? A 30% increase in hydrogen ions in the marine environment is actually quite significant. If you were to do that in your blood, it would be very significant. You'd probably be dead. We, we've already seen impacts on the West Coast where hatcheries have suffered 50 to 80% declines in production. Basically, what we're seeing is that the larvae, or the very baby oysters, are uh, impacted by the chemical composition of the ocean and are eroding faster than they're able to build their own shell. So essentially, when we realized this, we had mass mortality of oyster larvae found in our hatcheries in Neatarts Bay, Oregon, and growers didn't have access to shellfish seed anymore, so they couldn't plant their tidelands, and so there was a shortage. That meant that their businesses were impacted. Um, their, their staffs needed to be reduced. So, you know, when I first heard about acidification, I was very concerned about the shellfish industry. But it's not just shellfish that are impacted. And there's these marine snails and, and coccolithophorans, these, these plankton organisms that all uh, are the base of the marine food chain. If we lose those, you know, it's going to be a challenge for shellfish and shellfish farmers. But if we have a collapse of the marine food chain, that's going to be much more significant. It's not just shellfish. It's now we're talking about global pestilence. And while governments don't seem to uh, want to act in concert, um, what we're finding is that the states are acting and, and individuals are acting. And uh, millions and millions of little steps are, are being taken to mitigate and, and hopefully you know, turn this around. If we can slow the curve, perhaps we can, we can have an impact on, on how fast and how far we go.